gather round, little stem cells, and let me teach you about a battle as old as life itself. See, before our time as eukaryotic cells, the world was teeming full of bacterial life. But all was not well in our bacterial world, no siree, because if there's an ecological niche, there's a parasite itching to exploit it. And the secret to that battle was... <coughs> the secret to the battle... <coughs> the secret... <coughs> The secret was CRISPR. We eukaryotes have developed specialized immune systems that keep neutrophils like me employed. But before eukaryotes roamed the earth, bacteria and phage have been duking it out since the dawn of time. And just like us, bacteria also have an immune system, although it looks quite different than ours. Bacteria, they're just like us. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. In the last episode of this series, we saw how brutal and drawn out the fight between a eukaryote and a bacteria can be. But in contrast, these battles are quick, efficient, and make us look like we're running in slow motion. Again, we return to the central principle in the game of life. To win is to survive long enough to pass on your genetic payload. Phage are incomplete organisms only capable of completing the objective with the help of bacteria. But this help often comes at a high price. Hijacking a cell's machinery to print copies of yourself often leads to the death of the parasitized. Because bacteria and phage both replicate at way faster speeds than humans, the meta is capable of changing quite rapidly as both factions try to maximize their victory condition. Before we get into the specifics, let's just understand the broad game plan of the phage. To complete the objective, phages need to do a couple of things. Inject their genetic material, hijack the bacteria's machinery to make viral proteins, copy its own genetic payload, weaken the cell wall, and burst out, continue to spread to other bacteria. Phages that destroy bacteria prevent bacteria from completing its objective, and so begins the evolutionary arms race. To counter these moves, bacteria evolved a couple of different defense systems including destroying viral genetic material, preventing DNA or RNA replication, horizontal gene transfer, or the sharing of genetic secrets that empower other bacteria to resist phage infection. Today we're going to be talking about the most well-known system to destroy viral genetic material. And it may come as a surprise to you, it's CRISPR. CRISPR you say? Isn't that that sci-fi tech that allows you to modify DNA however you want? Well, before humans turned CRISPR into a handy tool, bacteria were using it to absolutely crush phages. See, CRISPR in bacteria works like this. When a phage enters a cell, the bacteria uses the enzyme Cas nuclease to snip off a piece of viral DNA. This snippet of viral DNA is then inserted into the bacterial genome, developing a form of immune memory. Now that the viral sequence is memorized by the bacteria, the bacteria can make copies of the RNA that came from that virus. This copy of the RNA will bind to that original spot on the virus's genome. This guide RNA brings along with it the enzyme Cas9. When this guide RNA and Cas9 successfully bind to the original spot on that virus, Cas9 delivers the killing blow by snipping the viral genome. This is an incredible weapon, as all the instructions that the virus needs is coded by its own genetic material. By cutting the instructions, the bacteria can effectively cut down the virus's ability to replicate. Phages get absolutely bodied by this strat, and many of them might just have to hope that they have mutations in their DNA that helps them avoid this bacterial memory. That was until certain phages evolved something that could not have been named more appropriately. Anti-CRISPR proteins. These proteins are currently being researched, and there are more being discovered constantly. They are highly variable in their structure and function, and different phages make different anti-CRISPRs. But what they all have in common is that they give the phage a fighting chance. One of the best studied anti-CRISPR proteins is acr 2 a 4 which I'm just going to call ACR. This tiny, tiny protein is only made out of 84 amino acids. To compare, hemoglobin, the protein that transports oxygen in the blood, is 574 amino acids long. And yet this tiny protein was evolved to perfectly screw with this CRISPR defense system. See this image? Here we see phage DNA tucked into the Cas9 system. This complex represents a dead phage. Once that DNA is bound to the Cas9 with its guide RNA, it's bye-bye DNA and bye-bye phage. But with the phage forcing the bacteria to make acr as well, watch what happens. 
the Acker protein is able to render Cas9 useless by plugging the hole where the phage DNA would fit, preventing DNA from ever binding the Cas9 system in the first place. No Cas9 binding, no snipping of viral DNA means the phage gets free reign over bacterial resources. Well, that's it then. If phages have the perfect anti-CRISPR tool, what hope do bacteria have? The thing is, a virus is as parasitic as they come, and bacteria have been striking it out on their own for a long time now. While viruses generally lack the complexity to code for a lot of its own stuff, bacteria are far less limited in the amount of information they can store. To outwit one anti-CRISPR protein, evolve another CRISPR. Some bacteria, like P. arginosa, have multiple CRISPR systems in each cell. And so we have a bloody, bloody war. A war where bacteria make CRISPR to crush phage. A war where phage mutate proteins to stuff CRISPR. A war where they both try to outmutate their tools and catch and kill the other. This is just one of many battles that rage on inside bacteria post-phage infection. There are many, many more ways that bacteria and phage do battle, and we are learning more about it every day. If you don't want to miss out on this story, make sure to subscribe for more cellular war content. Thanks for watching.